Ecoholics. Today we are going to discuss about the Kuznets curve. Now there are a lot of discussions and confusions regarding Kuznets curve. Why? Because Simon Kuznets originally had given a hypothesis about the Kuznets curve with respect to growth and inequality. But there is another curve which is also known as the Kuznets curve which is an environmental Kuznets curve. So today we are going to discuss about both these curves and both the hypothesis and what is the difference between the two. So let us begin with our discussion. Now Simon Kuznets is also known as the Nobel Prize winner who had won the Nobel Prize in 1971 in the economic sciences had basically done a lot in the field of economic growth. Now he had stated according to his observations, he had hypothesized that uh, any economy which is developing, that economy goes under a certain curve which is an inverted U-shaped curve. So let me show you with an example over here. So on the x-axis and y-axis we are going to keep two uh, factors which have been stated by Simon Kuznets. On the x-axis we have taken the per capita income as the index of growth in the per capita income of people. So that is per capita income over here and over on the y-axis we keep an index of inequality. Now originally it has been observed that Kuznets had used Gini coefficient as a very important inequality measurement but on the contrary there are other economists also who have kept other various indices. So the context of this particular position is that we need to keep any index, any index but in relations to inequality. So I'm over here going to write inequality index. Now let us start making the curve. Now the Kuznets curve is stated to be an inverted U-shaped curve. Now why is it an inverted U-shaped curve? Let us first find out that. He says that when it when an economy which undergoes development and then uh, goes for major amount of development in the whole process is going to undergo this inverted U-shaped curve. The first phase of the inverted U-shaped curve you can see that the slope is increasing and after reaching a saturation point it starts to decrease. Now what is the reason behind this? First of all let us also find out what is the relation between these two factors with relations to the inverted U-shaped curve. So over here we see that as the growth increases, as the growth in the economy increases, you're going to see that the per capita income is also increasing. So the development happens, maybe industrialization happens in the economy, there is more amount of industrialization and more amount of establishment of industries in the economy because of development. So definitely there is going to be increase in the GDP. But on on this part, we also see that inequality also is increasing. Now, why is that? What are the factors which are increasing the inequalities in reference to the per capita income, which is a very small increase over here? Now, let us look at this very carefully. Why? Why inequalities? First of all, we can definitely see I'm going to erase this for just a moment so that we can understand the causes of this inequality. The very first cause of inequality is rapid industrialization. Okay, so here I'm going to write rapid industrialization. Rapid industrialization not only means that industries are going to establish, it also means that the agricultural sector, which was until now a traditional uh, sector, now is going to be mechanized. So more of the capital intensive farm is, farming is going to uh, be there. And which is why now the labor is going to shift from the villages and from the traditional sector to a manufacturing sector. Now the manufacturing sector is in urban area, is in the cities, and which is why the people, the workers, the labor, human resource, all are going to have an internal migration. 
okay so they are going to internally migrate to more uh, or higher paying jobs to fetch higher paying jobs so this is also one of the major reasons why the inequalities are going to increase now these uh, increasing disparities and inequalities are going to increase till a time that industrialization settles down now what do i mean by industrialization settles down it just means that in until a point when there would be a proper establishment of various industries and when the structural development is going to happen in all various sectors of the economy so there will be an infrastructural development for construction there will be infrastructural development for education and for hospitals and for all other sectors so then we can say that yes now the economy has stabilized and that is the point when the curve is going to reach its height and then after the after the saturation point the graph or the curve is going to be a downward sloping curve which means with an increase in the per capita income of people now the inequalities are going to reduce okay now if you want to make a um, panel so you can just define these various phases over here we can define the phases of inequality so now let us talk about the various phases of how we can segregate this inverted u shaped curve or rather how simon kuznets has uh, understood it so over here we are going to make three phases now of course this phase is the pre industrialization phase pre industrialization phase and over here we can definitely say that the most amount of industrialization has initially started to happen industries have started to establish there will be more people who are going to be now engaging into industrial and manufacturing units and which is definitely going to be far more uh, earning um, to the people to the labor and definitely they are going to migrate from the villages to the manufacturing areas and definitely the inequalities are going to increase then there will be coming a certain uh, phase which is going to be known as the industrial stability phase now in this industrial stability phase most of the industries are going to get established of course there, there is going to be minor modifications in the economy about the infrastructural development but moreover it is going to be stabilized and now is going to be the time when the service sector is going to take a major role in giving people the amount of incomes or the amount of increments in their incomes so now according to simon kuznets the market forces are the major determinants of how the inverted u shaped curve is determined in a particular developing economy as the development exceeds and goes beyond the last stage is going to be that stage when the economy is going to be a service oriented economy a service oriented economy now um be, um you all must be definitely thinking that now what happens to india how can we relate this particular topic to india now you all can definitely observe make a trend analysis and definitely observe how a particular country is going to demonstrate a particular curve of uh, given by the simon kuznets hypothesis however as i as i have initially told that this is a hypothesis this is not a theory which can be proved a theory or a model can be proved by certain facts certain modelization but a hypothesis is just a, just a statement which is going to go for testing so for every country for every nation the, for every economy the hypothesis may change or it might be tested uh, proven wrong or proven correct so it is according to the nation the economy how it is going to develop is it a developing phase or it is a highly developed phase it is going to depend on that but yes for all the economics scholars this is something that you can definitely research about now there is another thing which is there uh, which is also known as ekc environmental kuznets curve 
Now, environmental Kuznets curve is often confused with the original curve because environmental Kuznets curve is understood or rather misunderstood as a curve given by Simon Kuznets itself. But this is another hypothesis. This hypothesis is going to test um, the same type of a formation of the curve, which means an inverted around an inverted U shaped curve, but has been provided by another two economists. Okay, so let us find out what has this particular curve in store for you. Okay, now this we are going to talk about the environmental Kuznets curve. So I'm going to erase the first curve. Now the pretext of this curve, definitely you know that this curve is an inverted U-shaped curve. So we are going to keep that definitely intact. Uh, apart from being inverted U-shaped, inverted U-shaped curve. It is also known as a fish hook. Okay. Now, if you go to fishing, definitely you you must have seen a hook that is very uh, very much used while fishing. So this curve actually represents like that. It's made something like this. Okay. So it's it represents like a fish hook. Initially, what happens? Initially. Again, there is an increase in something of, of course, increase in something which is over here in Y axis with an increase in the X axis and then there's a dip. Now, what are these two factors that we talk about? So, there are two people over here, Jean Grossman and Alan Kruger who have done another hypothesis on the hypothesis done by Kuznet. So the EKC curve that we are talking about or the environmental Kuznets curve that we talk about, the original uh, work that has been done by Jean Grossman and Alan Kruger and not Simon Kuznets. Okay, so they have made this hypothesis on the basis of Simon Kuznets hypothesis. Now what they say is when the development increases, as the development increases in the economy, there is going to be furthermore environmental degradation. Now you can definitely see this in a very big, ob this, there's an observation over here that we can put. As India started with its industri industrialization, the industrial revolution for India or for any other country for that matter, definitely started to establish a, a lot of industries. And we also started to use a lot of fuel, which was not green fuel that we use today or th that we start that we have started to use today also the sources of energy that we have until now used have been all um, violating the environmental laws there has been a lot of carbon dioxide emissions and a lot of carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide emissions so this has definitely increased the amount of environmental degradation in the whole economy now there are there have been so many conventions in the respect of environment that we look at and we observe that yes now is the time that the uh, that people and the um, economists and the various nations are actually trying to think that there has to be a switch the big switch has to happen from a conventional use of the sources of energy like fossil fuels, crude oil, coal, and switch has to be to hydro power, to solar power, to wind energy, and so on and so forth. So we are trying to opt for better and green energies and technologies. Now, this is a very important observation in terms of environmental economics also. So over here, we keep per capita income, same as the Kuznets curve, but over here, um, besides the inequality that Kuznets had told, we are now going to keep environmental degradation. Environmental degradation. So as the uh, industrialization is going to uh, increase, with an increase in the per capita income, there is also going to be an increase in the environmental degradation, which means that people are now not going to be so much focused on environment, but moreover focused on manufacturing and construction and developing the economy. And which is a major hypothesis, which uh, gives us a paradox that we are thinking about development, but we are not thinking about environment. 
now uh, as environmental economics is a very upcoming field in the uh, welfare economics and microeconomics as in uh, it is also taking an edge so all the economics so uh, scholars should definitely know about this particular concept now what happens is after a point of time of course this curve also reaches a saturation point which means that this is the height of carbon dioxide emissions now you must be knowing that there are so many government interventions that are um, uh, probably put in various economies with regards to permits how much how much a particular economy or how much a particular industry in an economy can actually environmentally degrade the whole economy or how much can it pollute how much carbon dioxide uh, oxide emissions are actually permissible all these different economic and non-economic direct and indirect concepts of factors which have been used as government interventions or as international conventions or the united nations conventions all these have been used to identify what is the level of um, pollution in a certain economy and how much you can go beyond it. So uh, the reason why carbon footprint, the reason why all these various uh, Pigovian tax and all these various taxes have come along is because of the major hypothesis and the major understanding about environmental degradation along the lines of development. But of course, if um, in the meantime, uh, during the development, if people, if governments, if institutions become vigil and alert about environmental degradation and what they are harming is their own houses, in, is their own home, uh, it is definitely going to be a saturation point after which gradually the upcoming sources of green energy, uh, biofuel and all these various other alternative sources of energy and alternative sources which are going to increase development but are also going to decrease the environmental degradation all these things are going to bring the curve down so this is what is the concept of the environmental kuznets curve ekc based on kuznets hypothesis but given by gene and allen okay so this was all about the simon kuznets curve or rather i should say the kuznets curves uh, i hope that i could identify the major con uh, conclusion over here and i could help you all if you like this video give a big thumbs up to this video and also do not forget to subscribe our channel ecoholics if you are preparing for any competitive examination then you have Ecoholics for you spreading along all the various courses with live classes, with recorded uh, classes as well, with hard copy study material, with a lot of other facilities like unlimited doubt resolution facility and a lot more. For further information, you can click the link below in the description. Thank you so much and have a great day.